If you're looking for some measuring calipers, there's an overwhelming number of options. Do you go for dial, vernier or digital? Do some perform better than expected, while others are overpriced for what you get? Which ones should I keep for myself, and which ones do I give away to people that I don't really like? To work all this out, I spent my own money buying 20 different calipers off AliExpress, ranging from just 76p up to £34, and I tested them to find out which are worth spending your money on. So today, I'm going to share the results of my experiments, give out some fun awards, and share my favourites with you. Today's video is sponsored by me at Vector3D.shop. There you can find all of our own products, like the VLMP Heatset Insert Press, Stepper Motor Analyzer, Rainbow Shift RGB Controller, and Cali Lantern, but we also support other small brands and creators like CNC Kitchen Inserts and Tools, Spanner System and Rat Rig Upgrades, and the Ajax 3D TD1 Filament Analyzer that's mainly for Hueforge. The first 10 people to use the code below will get 5% off of their order. My goal in this video is to help you, a 3D printing hobbyist, find the right calipers for doing jobs like printer calibration and reverse engineering. Of course, price will be a driving factor in our testing today, but I'll also be recording a number of other factors that could be important to your decision, such as the measuring error, smoothness, readout responsiveness, and packaging. As in, like, a box. The full testing will be available for YouTube and Patreon members with a summary on my blog. With all that cleared up, in no particular order, let's greet all of today's competitors. Starting off our list of competitors at item number one, we have Carbon Fiber. This is a plastic digital caliper weighing in at 54.9 grams, for which I paid £2.56. Coming in at item number two, we have the Meter Tuyo Hulk Edition. This is a stainless steel digital type caliper weighing at 155.4 grams, for which I paid £34.10. Coming in at item number three, we have Fantastic Plastic. This is a plastic vernier scale caliper weighing in at 15.87 grams, for which I paid a total of £3.15. At item number four, we have the Me Too No No Greasy Boys, a mild steel vernier caliper weighing in at 148.84 grams, for which I paid £20.58. At item number five, we have the Blue Chaise, a stainless steel digital caliper weighing in at 166.66 grams, for which I paid £25.81. Next off we have item number six, the Off-White Chaise, another stainless steel digital type caliper weighing 166.73 grams, also I spent £25.81. Moving on to item number seven, we have the Notatillos, a stainless steel digital type caliper weighing in at 159.55 grams, for which I paid only £18.19. Coming in at item number eight, we have the Hobbit Long Pockets, a stainless steel digital type caliper weighing 161.78 grams, for which I paid 14 pounds exactly. At item number nine, we have Little Didits. This is a stainless steel digital type caliper weighing 154.59 grams, just under 20 pounds at 19 pounds and 58 pence. At number 10, we have Pure Imperial Plastic. This is a plastic dial type caliper weighing in at just 49 grams precisely, for which I paid six pounds and nine pence. For number 11, we have Microplastic. This is a plastic vernier scale caliper weighing in at just 6.2 grams, for which I paid a whopping one pound and 13 pence. At number 12, we have the Silver Slider. This is another plastic digital type caliper weighing in at 50.22 grams, for which I paid a total of four pounds and seven pence. At number 13, we have the Dark Blight, another plastic digital caliper weighing in at 46.38 grams, for which I also paid four pounds and seven pence. At item number 14, we have the Moody Blues, a stainless steel digital caliper, just peeping over the 200 grams mark at 202, but it only cost me 15 pounds and 36 pence. For number 15, the Green Thumb, this is a stainless steel digital caliper weighing in at 162.15 grams and costing me 11 pounds and 19 pence. For item number 16, we have My Eyes Are Fine, the stainless steel digital caliper weighing 197.81 grams 
costing me just over 20 at 20 pounds and 13 pence. For number 17, my so-called daily drivers, these are a stainless steel digital caliper which are now broken unfortunately, but at the time they weighed 161 grams precisely and cost me 26 pounds and 50 pence. At number 18 we have AMR, always measure wrong. This is a carbon steel vernier type caliper weighing 151.49 grams at a price of 7 pounds and 92 pence. For item number 19 we have Grandpa because I've had them for many many years. This is a stainless steel digital caliper 160.65 grams costing me just eight pounds and 53 pence. At number 20 we have the definitely not German aka Von Haus. This is a stainless steel digital type caliper weighing 161.44 grams costing me eight pounds and 99 pence. Let's start off with the objective tests, weight and accuracy. For accuracy, I'm going to be measuring all three dimensions of a metric 123 block. So that's 25, 50 and 75 millimeters. There is some bias in caliper usage since of course the applied hand pressure can change the reading, but I numbered the calipers to avoid recognizing brands too often and left weeks between measuring and purchasing so that I'd forgotten how much I paid for each of them. For weight, I'm using some precision scales. I'll just place them on, let it settle and record the number, so not much bias there. For testing the smoothness of the slide, I tried to gently glide from one end to the other and back again. I'd made notes on how it felt in terms of the amount of force and the consistency of the friction, and then once I tested them all, I kind of graded them on their smoothness. For the readout speed, I made the judgement based on if the numerical values would jump over large amounts at a time when I moved the slide. So large jumps would mean a low refresh rate, while small jumps are higher refresh. While this doesn't actually change the final reading, I think fast updating is preferable in my opinion. For the wheel, some had one and some didn't. It's useful for fine adjustments and one-handed use, but really not essential I'd say. I just checked if it had one or not. For all of the tests, I set out scoring too, so I could add up the points at the end for an overall winner. And now we can move on to the results. Starting with slide performance, only 45% of the calipers I tested had a smooth sliding motion, so not a great proportion. Of the calipers that were not smooth, most struggled due to manufacturing tolerance rather than dirt or lack of lubrication. Moving on to the readout, half of them had a fast readout that didn't lag significantly behind the motion of the slide, which helps quick work when taking lots of readings. As it takes some time to read, I marked all the vernier scales as a no here, just so you know, even though they obviously don't actually digitally update at all. They're just generally slow to read. Although Vernier scales only actually accounted for 20% of the calipers tested, while digital made up a whopping 75%. We ended up with 12 stainless steel, and these often took the top spots in other categories, with our six plastic units always finding their way to the bottom of the pack. This obviously cuts up our weight, Graph 2, with the 12 heaviest being stainless steel and the 6 lightest being plastic. When it comes to protecting your valued purchase, 12 of the 20 calipers had some form of protective case. You might expect a minimum price point at which you start getting cases, but I actually got one with a £6 pair, so it seems you might be able to get one at pretty much any price point. Some of the more expensive options had really nice cases, like those from Shahe. But the meter no no greasy boys that were over £20 didn't come with a hard case, just this plastic sleeve. One quarter of the units tested didn't use any batteries, while SR44 was the most common, followed by CR2032. Moving on to some real stats, this is the average error from taking measurements at 25, 50 and 75 millimeters. At the bad end of the scale, we have some of our plastic calipers, of course, and these were barely better than a ruler, with an average error over 200 microns for the fantastic plastic and microplastic, with the dark blight, silver slider, and pure imperial plastic, as well as the carbon fibre, coming in fractionally better, with an error between 100 and 200 microns. At the good end, we had some quite impressive results from the Notatuyo, and my daily drivers, with an average error of just 7 microns. With a good selection in the acceptable range up to around 20 microns, including the Hobbit Long Pockets, the definitely not German Von Haus, and a couple of similar tools from Shahe. 
If we now compare the reading error to the declared accuracy from the product page or packaging, we find that actually 70% pass and 10% fail, with 20% not actually declaring anything either way. If we ignore the ones that don't declare, then it's an 87% pass rate, which is actually quite impressive. If we combine all our factors together, using my scoring system out of 33, with the weightings distributed like this, we can get an idea of how they all stack up against one another. So in this system, the higher the score, the better the result. So my winner here is the Notatoyos. They ended up being a great all-rounder and at a reasonable price, whilst also topping the chart when it came to accuracy. Clearly not all Mitutoyo clones are made equal though, as the Mitu No No Greasy Boys took last place, scoring only 4.69 points, of which a total of zero were from accuracy. I could probably study this chart for hours, but instead, let's hand out some silly awards for those that did particularly well or particularly bad. The first award goes to the best to use in an MRI scanner, and the winner is Pure Imperial Plastic. Yay! It's rubbish, but it's plastic, so it wins. The next award goes to the calipers that would make for the best marking tool, basically scratching using the sharp tip. And the award goes to Always Measure Wrong, because they're steel and they're very cheap. Next we have the Buyer's Remorse Award, and that is for the most overpriced and worst value. And this goes to the Mitutuyo Hulk Edition, for being green, overpriced and not very good. Next up is the Pessimism Award, for the best delivery versus the quoted figures. And this goes to the Silver Slider, not because it's good, it's actually pretty terrible, but the manufacturer knew it and sold them anyway. Now we have the Smooth Operator Award, for the best slide action. And this actually goes to three simultaneously, Little Digits, Blue Shahe and Off-White Shahe, all by the Shahe brand. All three offerings from this brand were all really well made, they're silky smooth, so they get the Smooth Operator Award. Next in the lineup we have Best for Measuring Around Corners, which goes to the calipers that are the most bendy. And the winner here is Fantastic Plastic. I mean really, can you get any more bendy than this? This award is a little more serious, the best for bad eyesight, also known as the one with the biggest display. And this award goes to, my eyes are fine. It's a bit of a fiddle to use, but the display is huge. This one's a bit of a joke though, the best for children, because it's lightweight, cheap and not very sharp. And this award goes to, microplastics, also because it's tiny. But spoiler alert, they're actually useless for everyone, even children. Now we have the best underdog, and this goes to Green Thumb. For just over £10, they did amazingly well, coming out in third place. So here are the suggestions you need if you want to make a purchase. Firstly, don't buy anything less than £10. It really just wasn't worth it. You're not saving money, you're spending money on something that's literally useless. And on the top end, I'd say probably don't go around more than about £25 to £30. I tested up to 34, but there wasn't much between like 25 and 30. But I didn't really find much of a benefit spending more than that. Obviously, this changes if you're like a professional, but we're not. We're hobbyists. When it comes to plastic calipers, really just don't bother. If you need a prop for a film, sure. Calipers that are plastic will be absolutely fine. But if you want to actually measure stuff, they're not very good at all. And lastly, my personal recommendation, even though they kind of objectively weren't perfect, I really liked the Shahe ones. They were all really smooth. I ended up getting three sort of by accident, slightly different variants, but they all performed really well, I think. They were all really smooth. Obviously, I can't speak for their longevity or anything. I've literally used them for a few weeks in doing this testing. Nothing more than that. And of course, this video isn't sponsored or anything, so I don't get anything from recommending a particular brand. Do you agree with my conclusions? Would you have made a different pick? Are you going to get something different or do you already own something that you think is better value than what I found? Let me know down in the comments below. Of course, there's also going to be links and stuff down there if you want to grab one of these. Some of them will be affiliate links, so do with that what you will. I do get a small kickback, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. Hopefully you can find something you like. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.